Hello, and thank you for joining us for the track Building User Trust at the Microsoft Research Summit 2022. I'm Melissa Chase, a principal researcher in the Cryptography and Privacy Group at the Microsoft Research Redmond Lab. Trust is the underlying principle that drives society forward. It informs our relationship with one another, how we share information, and the tools we use. The adoption of technology depends on trust, that our private information is protected, that will be treated fairly, that our systems are safe from attack, and that the technology we rely on complies with our laws and regulations. At Microsoft Research, trust is deeply woven into who we are, how we think about our place in the world, and how we approach our work. This is because trust in technology is a necessary condition for any positive benefit it may have for humanity. To us, trust means privacy, security, confidentiality, and responsibility. In this track, you'll discover how we at Microsoft Research, through the research we invest in and our engagement with the broader research community, are committed to earning and keeping this trust with the communities we serve and the governments that represent them. In this track, you'll see a lightning series on responsible AI and the challenge of working with large AI models. Large-scale AI models introduce new challenges in responsible AI areas such as private privacy protection, model interpretability, ethical language generation, and evaluation of application maturity. In these talks, you will learn how researchers are addressing these challenges and the breakthroughs they're realizing. In the following session, you'll hear about research in understanding user expectations as they relate to differential privacy and exploring ways to communicate differentially private guarantees to users. Additionally, we have a series of talks that focus on privacy and identity revolution. Here, researchers discuss some of the work being done to realize a vision of an equitable, secure, and privacy-preserving layer for the Internet. We conclude with a panel discussion on how privacy research can inform privacy standards and regulation, and how privacy regulations, in turn, drive focus areas in privacy research. We begin this track with Microsoft senior researcher Hui Shui Zhang. In his talk, he discusses the challenges of training large language models while preserving privacy, and how he and his team apply differential privacy to unlock domain-specific private data. We'll learn about the specific approach he and his team are taking to successfully train large language models while overcoming the challenges of scale and preserving user privacy. We'll also discover the opportunities this approach presents in product, ap product application. Without further ado, let's get started. We hope you enjoy the track. Hello, everyone. Thanks for attending Microsoft Research Summit. My name is Hui Shui. I'm a researcher from Microsoft Research Asia. Today for this talk, I'm very happy to share our recent progress on differentially private machine learning. First, I will focus on one project that is published in iClear 2022 with the title Differentially Private Fine-Tuning of Large Language Models. In the end, I will also mention several other projects along the line of differentially private machine learning. For this great project, we have fantastic collaborators across the world. Da Yu from Sun Yat-sen University is an intern at MSRA. Gopi, Sergey, uh, Andrew, Artas, Hossein, Jana, Intai are from Microsoft Research at Redmond. Lucas, Sora are our colleagues from E plus D. Uh, Gautam is a professor from Waterloo. The goal of this project is to train state-of-the-art deep learning models such as GPT-2 and GPT-3 that are robust to membership attacks. People may know GPT-2 or GPT-3 very well, so what is membership attacks? Why is it most important to us? So assume we have a bunch of training data, uh, say the great scientist in the history, uh, Newton, Laplace, Einstein. Uh, we want to use this training data to train our machine learning model. After training, we would like to do inference with this model. Suppose we only observe the predictions of the model and nothing else. Especially, we do not have the access of the data. What we can say about the data? Can we say I'm sure that Laplacian data was used for training this model with high confidence. Formally speaking, uh, 
Given the model of the prediction, can we determine whether a specific data point is used to train the model? This is possible if the model memorizes the training data. Indeed, many research papers have shown successful attacks. For example, the tab attack. Suppose I'm writing an email, as this cartoon shows, long live the revolution, our next meeting will be at. With this prefix, the edit could automatically show the meeting's location and the time. Then a tab key will automatically complete the sentence. Then you may wonder, how does the editor know my thoughts? This is because when you train the predictive model on input from the user, the model could memorize the data. This can lead information leakage unexpectedly. Many papers are discussing this leakage, especially this one, the secret shares conducted by Nicholas Kalini, Liu Chang, and uh, Arlington, and Dong Song. They mentioned in their introduction that the unintended memorization of machine learning models is both commonplace and hard to prevent. They also mentioned that only by using DP training techniques are we able to eliminate the issue completely. Here comes to our weapon to prevent such privacy leakage, differential privacy. So the differential privacy, the concept was proposed by Cynthia DeWalk and uh, her collaborators in 2006. DP considers the following problem. Suppose we have two data sets, X and X prime. They differ from each other by just one data point. And X and X prime are randomly thrown into our training algorithm M. We obtain our trained model. The adversary tries to determine which data set is used to train the model when only observing the trained model. Mathematically, the, here is the definition. M is, is said to be epsilon delta dp if for all data, for all inputs, x and x prime, which differ on one entry, the probability of mx is close to the probability of mx prime for any given observation s. DP tries to guarantee that a single data point will not change the output much. The parameter epsilon and the delta captures how much privacy will protect. The smaller the epsilon and the delta, the better the privacy. From theory, from this uh, formula, we may say that it seems only very small epsilon and the delta can, can we say, guarantee them privacy. However, in practice, epsilon with single digits, uh, or the delta is smaller than the order of uh, one over the number of uh, parameters, uh, the number of uh, samples, one could obtain quite good privacy protection in the sense that it is sufficient to feel the membership attack. Recall our previous example. If we remove Laplacian's data from the training set and rerun the training process, obtain a new model, if the new model behaves statistically the same as the previous one, we can safely say that from the inference of these two models, we cannot determine whether Laplacian's data is used. Then the problem is how to achieve differential privacy. Uh, in practice, people usually add noises to the algorithm to mask the exact output. In the area of uh, Differentially private deep learning, a seminal paper called Deep Learning with Differential Privacy, published in 2016 by Abadi et al. They achieved the differential privacy in deep learning by making the SED process private. We call it DPSED. 
then the trained model will be automatically private because of, because of the post-processing property of the differential privacy. Let us examine the process of uh, DPSED in detail. First, uh, revisit uh, the SED. At every iteration, we first uh, randomly permute the data. We sample a mini batch and we compute the gradient. We aggregate, aggregate the gradient. And then we use the aggregate, or aggregate the gradient to update the model, corresponding to the steps 1, 2, 3, 5, 7 in the figure. The DPSGD has two important differences compared with the SGD. As shown in the figure, the step 4 and the step 6. After computing the gradient, we conduct clipping. We clip the individual gradient according to some threshold. And after, after the aggregation, we add some noise to the sum the gradient. From the high level of understanding, this clipping controls each user's contribution. And the noise can mask the exact information of a single user. We can play it with the favorite task, Cypher 10. We can see that no matter what architecture is chosen, CN, ResNet, or the ScatterNet, the best, best accuracy of DPSED is around just 60% uh, accuracy for the Cypher 10 classification task. This is something unacceptable given the non-private SOTA is more than 98% accuracy. Uh, uh, one thing to mention is that the most recent result using techniques, uh, using various techniques can boost the DPSGD's accuracy for this task around 80. However, uh, there's still a large gap compared with the non-private version. One plausible explanation for the above performance drop is that DPSGD is hard to scale to large, large models. Because the noise energy increases with the dimension, while the signal energy usually does not. This means the SNR, the signal to noise ratio, decreases with the model as the model size increases. However, Another common belief in machine learning, the large, the large model always give you better performance. SOTA models can consist of billions of parameters. This means there, these two opposite stretching forces are hard to balance when applying DPSGD to large models. Another challenge of DPSGD is the resource usage. In one sentence, the DPSGD is very expensive to run because one needs to control the individual gradients. For example, one can set the batch size to one uh, to, do the, uh, to control the individual gradients. However, this is extremely inefficient for current GPU parallel computing architecture. These two weak points of uh, DPSGD is very fundamental and prevent the adoptions of DPSGD in practice. Meanwhile, as we know that the large language model has achieved super impressive results on NLP tasks, especially the transformer-based architecture, such as BERT, GPT. The transformer architecture is listed in the right-hand side. It contains the attention layer that is used to compute the correlations between the tokens uh, in our sentence and the feed-forward layer to extract uh, the high-level abstraction successively. In practice, people usually take a two-step procedure. First, pre-training on a large, diverse data set, and then fine-tuning on a small task-specific data set. And what we want to do here is that we want to pre-train the model 
with a large, diverse public data set, and then fine-tune it on a small, task-specific private data set. This makes a lot of sense to handle the domain-specific private data, because the public data alone can, can never enable truly customized experience. For example, at Microsoft, uh, we use project uh, pseudonyms like Aristotle to describe our initiative AI at scale. However, for the model trained with public data, can only recognize Aristotle as great philosopher. This is clearly demonstrated that the importance of uh, context and the reference is very important for, uh, for the model to handle customized uh, experience. And we hope that with large, large pre-trained model, we can increase the utility while preserving the privacy. However, the large language model are very huge with billions of parameters. This means it will cost uh, significant memory and time to run and store, especially for the DPSGD. And uh, how to handle these difficulties? Where is our opportunities? The short answer is that it's a low intrinsic dimension. People believe that although the model size is huge, the intrinsic dimension of the fine-tuning task is small. Uh, here I list the two papers. And uh, one paper one paper specifically write down the following two sentences. I, I would like to read them. We empirically show that common pre-trained models have very low intrinsic dimension. In other words, there exists a low in low dimensional reparameterization that is as effective for fine-tuning as a full parameter space. They also mentioned they also mentioned that we empirically show that the pre-training implicitly minimizes the intrinsic dimensions. And perhaps surprisingly, larger model tends to have lower intrinsic dimension. This gives us a hope that if the intrinsic dimension is smaller for the larger model, we may also get the improved performance for the DP training as the model gets larger. An intuitive understanding is that if the number of uh, private, private bits is decreasing as the model size gets larger, in the limit, if the intrinsic dimension is zero, the model is already private. And the, the left question is how to find such a low intrinsic dimension to, uh, for fine tuning? Let us uh, introduce a parameter efficient fine tuning. Generally speaking, you can, you can get away with tuning less than 1% one, uh, 1 of parameters of the large language models and achieve comparable accuracy as you fine tuning 100% uh, of the parameters. There are a lot of tricks uh, you can utilize, such as Adapter, adapters, uh, compactors, low rank reparameterization. Let us uh, take the low rank reparameterization as an example. Suppose you have a dense weight matrix M with dimension d by d, and if you train this uh, weight matrix, you have to train d squared parameters for fine tuning. The LoRa Reparameterize the M into two parts. One is the pre-trained weight, WPT, which is the same same dimension as the, as M, and the other part is a bottleneck branch, B times A, where the B and A are low rank matrix matrices. During training, we fr we freeze the pre-trained weights WPT and only train the Low rank matrices A and B. So the 
trainable parameters in total is uh, two times Rd. This is much smaller than the d two uh, d d square if uh, r is much smaller than the d. Say for example, r equals eight, while d can be uh, uh, 10, 24. Let me try to abstract out some key point for the parameter efficient fine tuning. Suppose f is a pre-trained model with PT is a pre-trained weights and X is an input. And we construct a fine tuning model FFT with parameter WPT and theta and X. The theta are newly introduced parameters with dimension much smaller than the pre-trained weights WPT. And this abstraction encompasses all above methods. And uh, this is this framework is very important, and we, and I actually want to advocate uh, we should adopt uh, this framework when doing the private learning. Let uh, let me further illustrate this framework. Use some figures. We first use large uh, pre a uh, public data set to train a, a large language model with non-private optimizers. And this model and the training process can be visible to the adversary. And then we add some new parameter to train on a small private data set with private optimizer such as, such as DPSGD. We call this step DP tune, which is not visible to the adversary. And finally, we have a large pre-trained pre model that is public and uh, visible to the adversary. And we have a small DP tuned plugin with. We can compare this two parts together to conduct the fine tuning task on the private data set. For this framework, we have an, an additional benefit that we only need to store the fine-tuned parameters per task. We do not claim this uh, framework novel as there are many uh, previous work has implemented this. But here, I want to abstract out the key selling point and uh, say that this is, should be viewed as the, a principal way to conduct uh, private learning. Let's see some evidence of the power of this framework. We conduct an experiment on standard GLUE dataset with a Robata pre-trained model. Our first finding is that the large language model can be fine-tuned privately with excellent performance. For example, for the Robata large with epsilon equals 6.7, there's only 3% drop from the non-private version. Compared with the previous CIFAR-10 experiment, this is a, a huge improvement. The other point is that you can only tune 1% 1 1 of the parameters for per task. And uh, I here, I want to leave one silent question is that, uh, is their parameter efficiency really help us to achieve this great performance? And we will come to this question later. We also tested with generation tasks. For the E2E task, natural language generation task, with epsilon equals 6, the GPT pre-trained model can achieve very good performance. And uh, we would like to mention that we achieve an additive factor of one, uh, 1 1.5 to 2 reductions on the epsilon by using the numerical composition of DP given by our colleagues 
uh, Gobi in China and uh, Lucas in 2000 and, uh, 2021. Another very interesting and important observation is that the bigger model actually gave us a better performance, even for the differentially private, uh, with the same differentially private guarantee. Compared to the results of uh, Roberta Base and the Roberta Large, the Roberta Large increases the accuracy by three points on average. Also, this is true for the generation task. You can experience better performance for larger models. And uh, especially, you, can, you also observe less drop due to the privacy for the larger models. The last but not least, our approach enjoys a more efficient training and consume much less memory. Compared to the fine, fully fine-tuning, DP LoRa uses one-fourth memory and three times faster. For example, the GPT-2 with uh, LoRa, the private and private non-private are the, almost the same fast with the OPCAS library. So we come to the hypothesis of the low intrinsic dimension. It seems uh, that the intrinsic dimension hypothesis is true as we observe that DP performance get improved as the model size get larger. However, the left question is, what is the role of the parameter efficiency in fine tuning? And uh, here, I ask a self-challenging question. What is the role of the parameter efficiency? Uh, is, is it essential for the above achievement? As we know, for non-private training, parameter efficiency is primarily to reduce the cost of full fine-tuning. The full fine-tuning is, is still an option if one ignores the cost of uh, fine-tuning. For private learning, definitely, the parameter efficiency improves the running time and the memory, especially for the DBSED. And we want to ask, is the parameter efficiency is also necessary to reduce the noise and improve the utility and versus privacy trade-off? So we would like to mention our con concurrent work. The large language model can be strong differentially privacy learner, given by Xue Chen, Florian, Percy Liang, and uh, Tassunor. They actually train the full, if, uh, full model and achieve very good private accuracy for the public pre-training plus private fine-tuning procedure. Their result actually demonstrates that the privacy accuracy improvement is not due to their parameter efficiency in some sense. So the low intrinsic dimension seems to be true for good DP performance, but the parameter efficient approach is not necessary, if only for the good performance. So we come to another hypothesis. If the, uh, the low intrinsic dimension works with DPSED implicitly, this means you do not have to explicitly introduce a parameter efficiency approach if, if, you, just, uh, if you are just for good utility. So, it is, uh, it is really fascinating to understand how the intrinsic dimension and uh, the DPSED interact with each other. Actually, there is a following up paper by our colleagues and uh, I will introduce later. To wrap up, in this talk, we demonstrate our approach help us to train large language models with DP guarantees while achieving great accuracy. From a theoretical point of view, we discussed that the low intrinsic dimension of the learning process is essential 
to this success. In the end, I would like to mention several other related work that is that done by me or our colleagues along the line of uh, differentially private machine learning. The first one is that uh, when does the differentially private learning not suffer in high dimensions? In the end of last part, I mentioned that we can get great performance of DPSCD even if you fine tune the whole network. This seemingly uh, contradicts with the known belief that large model will in, uh, induce bad SNR. And uh, we, uh, here we come to the hypothesis that uh, the low intrinsic dimension works with DPSCD implicitly. This paper actually tries to answer the question that when does the performance of differentially private learning not degrade with increasing model size? The paper obtains dimensional independent bounds uh, when the objective is restricted Lipschitz continuous. And then this gives us a, a possible explanation for the recent success of the large, long, uh, large scale private fine tuning. And if you, if you are interested, please check out the paper and uh, contact with the authors. Another paper is differentially private model compression. Uh, the, model, the modern deep learning pipeline is as follows. You first uh, fine tune uh, pre train on the public data and then fine tune on private data. However, large language model consists of uh, hundreds of uh, millions of parameters. Hence, the memory footprint are too large for many applications. So before deploying, uh, the model are compressed to meet the memory and the latency requirement for specific applications. The question the paper tries to answer is, what algorithm should we use to produce compressed private models? And how do they impact the private fine tuning via DBSED? The paper introduced, introduces DP knowledge distillation, and it is the first paper to consider the model compression in the private setting. And if you are interested, uh, please check out the paper and connect with the authors. Another paper called normalize the, or clip the SED with perturbation for differentially private non-convex optimization. This paper studies our fundamental problem, the convergence of a DPSED algorithm in the non-convex setting. This problem has been studied before, but previous work does not handle the clipping rigorously. In this paper, we explicitly handle the clipping operation for DBSED, and our results improve over previous bounds and there are much weaker assumptions. More interestingly, we also study another algorithm, DBNSED, which instead of uh, clipping the per sample gradients, DBNSED normalizes per sample gradients. And uh, we empirically, we demonstrate uh, that these two algorithms achieve similar best accuracy, while DPSED is easier to tune than uh, DBSED. As you can see from the, uh, from the figure, the DPSED is sensitive to the clipping threshold while the DPNSED is much stable to the regularizers. If you are interested, please check out the paper and contact with the authors. Another work called Individual Privacy Accounting for Differentially Private Stochastic Gradient. This is a slightly different, but also a very interesting topic. The Euro DPSED gives a single privacy guarantee for all the data points in the dataset. In this paper, we consider the individual privacy accounting. We propose an efficient algorithm to compute the privacy guarantees for individual samples. 
As a result, we find that most uh, sample enjoys much stronger privacy guarantee than the worst case bond. And our result also reveals a very interesting observation that the groups are uh, underserved in terms of model utility are, all, are also underserved in terms of uh, privacy guarantee. If you are interested, please check out the paper and uh, contact with the authors. What is next uh, to expect? What we are doing right now is to try to push the boundary of the DP learning. Uh, we try to train even larger model with DP guarantees. Along the way, we also try to develop more efficient algorithm for DBSGD. So stay tuned. More exciting uh, research are yet to come. Thanks for your attention. That's all about my sharing. Okay.